Cumberland Outdoorsman with you here today. This is November the 23rd and what I'm doing right now is cooking up some wild mushrooms that I gathered back in June. And uh, the upcoming video will be me actually going out in the woods and collecting those mushrooms. And I'll show you there are two different species that I collect here and also the ones that you should avoid. I also mentioned in this video the use of a dependable field guide. And what I've got here is the National Audubon Society Field Guide to North American Mushrooms. They have excellent photographs and descriptions of what you're looking for. Uh, the mushrooms that we're concerned with are chanterelles. Okay, They're in the chanterelle family. Very detailed descriptions and it gives you a uh, description of where they're found and when you can find them, when you can expect to look for them. Um, also the edibility. It says here choice with caution for a reason. The pictures that are in here are actually somewhat generalized but they give you a good idea of what you want to look for. And these are the chanterelles that we're looking for. This one and this one. And I'll show you good photographs of those in my video. But anyway, I'm going to uh, cook these today. And I've got some fresh venison here to go with this recipe that I've got. The way I preserve them is I partially uh, saute them in butter or butter flavored Crisco. And this is what you get. This is the product that you get at the end. And uh, they, they keep their integrity quite well if you freeze them once they're partially sautéed like that. So without further ado, here is the video, and I hope you enjoy it. This is June the 24th, 2019, and uh, within the last week, week and a half, here in Middle Tennessee, we've had lots of rain and some pretty severe thunder showers. A uh, storm rolled through here yesterday evening. Uh, and, uh, what we've got is plenty of moisture in the ground now here. And this is the beginning of the chanterelle season here in Middle Tennessee. And what I'm talking about are wild mushrooms, edible wild mushrooms. Here are the mushrooms I'm talking about. Now there's two varieties that are edible that live here in these hardwood forests. This is the smooth chanterelle and then there's also the golden or yellow chanterelle that's commonly gathered in Europe and in Asia and uh, these are actually quite a delicacy and if you fix them right they're they're quite delicious. That You can fix them with gravies or stews you can even pan fry them with onions and uh, saute them with eggs, which is a, another very good dish. But if you catch them when they come out fresh like this, that's when they're the best. Okay, uh, and they're, they have a nice fragrant smell to them, and it's kind of a fruity, a fruity kind of smell. And what I do when I harvest them, I use a pocket knife. Just a small pocket knife like this case that I've got here and I cut the bottoms off. I don't tear them out of the ground. That leaves the root structure or the mycelium is what it's called intact in the ground and if you don't destroy that quite often you can come back year after year and there'll be mushrooms growing there if the conditions are right. Even after uh, say a period of two or three years when we've had a drought uh, the following year you'll have substantial rain and uh, just like magic the mushrooms are back. <laughs> so anyway I'm going to see if I can find some more. There's several more, several on the ground here and I'm sure there's more along these drainages. Uh, there's also the uh, golden chanterelle which occurs here too and what I like to do is when I gather wild mushrooms I use a mesh bag like this and uh, it keeps your mushroom uh, harvest pretty well all together. 
but what it also does is it allows the spores from the mushrooms to fall through the bag. You can't see them, but uh, you're actually spreading spores throughout the forest when you harvest mushrooms this way. And if you keep them in an aerial bag like this, uh, it also keeps them nice and clean, you know, and it keeps them from getting all mashed together like they would in a plastic bag or something. So if you harvest mushrooms, whether they're morels or chanterelles or any other kind, use a mesh bag. You'll be doing yourself and the forest quite a favor. So I'm going to gather these up and then we're going to go over there and see if we can find some of the gold. When you encounter these chanterelles, this is what you look for. You see these bright orange bunches of mushrooms and uh, usually they're found in colonies like this. I'll show you how I harvest them here. In some places this variety is also known as the apricot, uh, the apricot chanterelle. Okay, just cut them at the bottom. What it does, it keeps your mushrooms clean, so you don't have as much cleaning time when you get back home. It keeps them nice and fresh and clean. You don't get any dirt and bugs and everything like you would if you ripped them out of the ground. See there? Nice and fresh. Clean some of this stuff off while you're harvesting them. Saves you time later. And I don't get them all. I leave some for nature herself. We'll take that one and we'll leave the rest. And just right there, I got a good handful of fresh chanterelles. tell you the flavor of these uh, to me is, is actually more pronounced and better than morel mushrooms even though I love morels I've always been a fan of these chanterelles okay here's a golden chanterelle there's a few more around um, they're not as brightly colored as the smooth chanterelle there, I just spotted some more there and uh, the difference between the two are the gills here. You'll see they're flattened gills on the uh, golden chanterelle. Whereas the smooth chanterelle is exactly as it's described. It's much smoother. Two different species that live here in the eastern forests of the United States. Uh, I don't believe these occur in Europe, but these do. And these are highly sought after in uh, countries like Germany and France. Uh, uh, also, I think uh, places like Hungary and uh, Poland. Wherever there's deciduous forests that have been left to grow wild, that's where you discover these mushrooms. Um, I just stepped over two more right here. Grab my knife here. These just came out in the last two days or so. So there's some more. These are all goldens here. Let me pan around here and see if I can find. There's two more right there. Just spotted. They don't grow in the, as big a colony, as I mentioned, as the smooth chanterelle. But I actually prefer the uh, flavor of these goldens a, a little bit better. They're all good, but the goldens I favor because as a boy growing up with my German grandfather, my opa, as you say in Germany, this is what we gather. This is what we look for. Let's 
so far. This is what I've harvested and I've only been out here for a few minutes. So let's keep looking. Okay, this is one mushroom that you want to avoid. I know what you're thinking. They look just like the chanterelles. Well, they do have the same color and basically the same size. This is called a jack-o'-lantern, okay? And it's mildly poisonous. Uh, I don't know of anybody that has actually died from these, but they grow in clusters like this on the sides of stumps and these uh, mossy little hills where trees have been uprooted. Uh, but the way to tell the difference is these have really sharp, sharply defined gills. See how, how sharp the gills are? And chanterelles are very dull. They don't have this uh, this same structure. Um, I would avoid these. And if you have any questions at all, err on the side of caution. This is a jack-o'-lantern. You don't want this mushroom. And they always grow in clusters like that. Okay, sometimes chanterelles can grow in small clusters together, but after you've been around them long enough, you can spot them in an instant. And what is a true chanterelle and what is a jack-o'-lantern becomes very, very apparent. So we don't want that mushroom. That's one to avoid, and I wanted to include that uh, with this video as uh, a word of caution. So anyway, avoid the jack-o'-lantern. Okay, here's a few more chanterelles that I found. These are uh, the golden chanterelle. And there's a small colony of them here. These are all fresh. As you can see. Gather them up. Clean off the debris. One thing I should mention when I brought up the uh, point about the uh, poisonous mushrooms like the uh, jack-o'-lantern is that unless you're absolutely positive of what you've got don't take the chance. I'm 100 percent sure of what these are so I have no problem eating them but if you're not sure either consult an expert someone that really knows what they're doing with wild mushrooms or um, at least go to a field guide that shows clear pictures and descriptions of what you're trying to harvest. Okay, These are all edible mushrooms. I'm 100% sure of that. There's no way that I would risk myself or my family's health um, to an inedible or a poisonous wild mushroom. It's just not worth it. So I've got a good batch here. This will make for a fine dish this evening. And uh, there should be a few more on the way home. I'll keep my eye out for them. But uh, chanterelles can be superior, a superior mushroom uh, in terms of flavor and uh, also in the versatility of how you can prepare them. Just make sure you make sure you know what you're harvesting for your own sake and your family's. Okay, here's a small colony of chanterelles that I found on the way home. I've been finding these along this ridge here for the last, oh, 10 years now. And every year I come back and I harvest them the same way. So, if I want to come back next year or the year after, um, they'll be here, you know. So let me harvest these right quick. A small handful. These are all smooth. Chanterelles, by the way. And the ones I found up the hill there are all goldens. So two varieties growing right here uh, amongst each other. 
Okay, now we got our mushrooms all cleaned up, and what I'm going to do is use some diced onions, and I've got my meat cut up here. Uh, tonight we're going to use beef. Normally we use venison, but I'm going to season this and uh, tenderize it and cook it, and then uh, we'll mix in the mushroom gravy with the uh, diced onions to make a goulash. So first we're going to go ahead and put some butter in the skillet here and cook our meat, boil it down to where it's uh, tender and then we'll cook it in the skillet as well. And all that will be a topping for uh, some noodles. So let me go ahead and get started and we'll continue after I get everything going. And I'll use real butter and we'll go ahead and put my onions in. I'll tell you them in the butter. The onions really help accentuate the flavor of the uh, chanterelle mushroom. Put our mushrooms in on top. Now this looks like it may be too much, but these will condense down uh, once they're cooked, condense way down to where they will only be about a third of what you got here. But we want the onions to be on the bottom. And I got my meat started there. So when they get cooked down, uh, we'll be back at that time. Okay, this is the finished dish. After I got the mushrooms sautéed with the onions, I made a cream sauce and cooked them in the cream sauce with butter and uh, got them down to where they're good and tender. And then I took my beef stock where I uh, boiled down the beef. You can also use venison or elk, which I would actually prefer over beef. And you can make your, uh, your gravy with the beef stock and then mix that in with your cream sauce and put your meat and everything together with the mushrooms let those cook and uh, put put all this on top of a bed of noodles you can also use rice or potatoes and and use the mushrooms and the beef or the meat sauce as a topping and I've had many meals like this that are rather enjoyable you can season it to however you like it uh, salt garlic and a little bit of vinegar would actually help accentuate the flavor of the mushrooms too. Um, try not to overpower it with too much. You want some of that mushroom, that wonderful mushroom flavor to actually uh, be part of the whole meal there. You know, you want, you want the, the mushroom flavor to be inundated into the gravy and into the meat. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy your mushrooms as much as I do. Well folks, I'd like to thank you for coming along with me during that mushroom hunt. I shot that video back in June, late June, and uh, usually that's when the chanterelle season starts here in the Mid-South, is about mid-June until, oh, maybe the first part of August. That is, if you have good rainfall. During a drought, you're probably not going to find any, but uh, if it starts raining and you get good substantial rainfall, it's probably a good idea to go out in the woods a few days after that and look for these mushrooms. But uh, remember, heed the warning that I gave during the video. There are a few look-alikes that you don't want to gather. But uh, be sure of what, you, what you're getting. So anyway, remember, if you go outdoors and you like to hunt or fish, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And also remember, hit the like button, hit the bell icon, and subscribe. That way you'll know when I bring you more videos like this. So until next time, this is the Cumberland Outdoorsman, and I'll be with you again very soon. Y'all take care, my friends. Have a great day.